Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for joining me. So today we're going to take a look at this Superscope by Marantz CRS2104. This particular model dates from around 1978, 79, something like that. So either way, she's getting on for 45 years old now and it's in remarkably good condition, I've got to say. Um, stood the test of time really well. I'll just give you a quick walk around. It's still got the original white tip on the aerial and um, the little covers there for the uh, the antenna screws, everything's present. Really not in bad condition at all. She does need a bit of a clean, obviously a deep clean, degrease and a polish and all that kind of stuff. But the reason I wanted to share this one with you today, um, typical really for the kind of things we have in here is that um, she needs a few little jobs doing, um, some super easy, some slightly less easy, I guess, and we, we don't really know what they are yet. But, um, it was when I bought it, it was described as, and I pretty much quote here, radio works, haven't got a cassette to test the tape player. So you kind of think, yeah, you know, someone's probably just knows the tape player doesn't work and doesn't want to say they've tested it, but they want to be able to test it enough to, uh, to say that, oh yeah, the radio works, it, it should be fine. So you always take these things with a very large pinch of salt. Um, but it's a beautiful model and I love like the, uh, the brushed metal cap, uh, caps or covers on the transport buttons and all that sort of stuff and just love the design of it and I thought well what could possibly be wrong right so actually this one doesn't seem in too bad condition and I was just kind of going through it in my own time really I wasn't necessarily going to do a video on this particular one but when I plugged it in to test it I noticed a few things and I made a list of about five things that really needed to be repaired one was that the uh, the pots were really 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 scratchy really noisy to the point where in fact the signal was barely coming through especially on the volume so that needed to be looked at then yes the radio did work as the uh, seller originally described but as soon as you moved it from fm to anything else there was just nothing there at all and i've just started just started to sort of wiggle the switch a bit and stuff and, and i've just started to get a bit of signal through and i'm pretty sure it's just spent most of its life in that FM position and the, the actual uh, the switch inside actually just needs a clean to free up the contacts and get everything else moving so I thought we'd have a look at that together um, but um, the other thing as well is the VU meter doesn't work and that's kind of pegged out on maximum if you can see it there so we'll hopefully get a chance to look at that but the main issue really with the unit is that the, um, the tape player doesn't work or at least it's got an issue which um, we're hoping to be able to fix today and that is that when you press play, it actually plays for a second or two and then auto stops. Now I tried this a couple of times, as I say, off camera, because I wasn't originally gonna feature this particular model. I, I was just working away on my own time on it. But um, I noticed the first few seconds when you put a tape in, it did work, which meant the play seemed to work okay. The motor was working okay. And the amplifier circuits and everything like that seemed fine. Then next thing you know, it just stopped and then it would play and stop, play, stop. And I'm pretty sure that the issue with it is going to be, um, I'd imagine it's it's the belts and there's probably an issue with the take up reel. So it's feeding the, uh, I think it's feeding the tape through, but not taking it up onto the reel. So because the tape then stops, it, um, I think the auto stop is kicking in because it thinks the tape's finished and that's why it keeps stopping. Incidentally, the tape, for the reason I'm not doing this live for you now, is when I actually did this with the tape, it ended up chewing my tape up totally. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what's happening is it's feeding the tape, but um, but actually just spewing it out everywhere and not taking it up onto the take up reel. So um, I think that's why it's auto stopping. It just it's not sensing the tape coming back out the other side. So um, as I say, just in summary, then we've got noisy pots to look at. We've got to try and restore the radio function. We've got the VU meter, hopefully we can get a chance to look at, but certainly I wanna try and see if we can sort this uh, cassette mechanism out. So that's an overview of what we're gonna be looking at. And uh, without further ado, let's plug it in and take a listen. Okay, so I've just plugged it in. So if we switch it over to radio, there we go. Okay, now can you hear that crackle? So all I'm gonna do, or all I did do, I should say, let me just turn it away. In fact, what I'm going to do now is turn the radio back off. Don't want to hit any content matches, but basically this one, I'm just turning that volume knob 
back and forth, back and forth, all the way. Because I usually take these apart and put some spray cleaner inside, and we probably will do that anyway once we do open it up. But for now, I think it's just literally been sat in one position for so long, it just got a bit scratchy. So let's see if we can just smooth that out by purely by doing nothing more than moving the knob. And there we go. I'll just tune it in to up, something like that. And there we go. So that's fixed that problem without even touching anything apart from the knob itself. Um, and that's, that's the simplest, easiest fix you'll ever get on one of these old radios. So the next stage is to do try and do the same with um, the radio itself. So we're now in FM. So I'm just gonna turn this on, turn this up slightly just to get some signal. Okay, so FM works. Then we go to medium wave, nothing, crackle. Okay, now we've got a little bit coming through. More crackle on the short wave. So what we wanna do again, just do the same again. I'll turn the volume down. And yeah, just, just literally keep turning this and wiggling it and just trying to free up the contacts. It's not very scientific at all, but hopefully this will be a start and give us an idea of what works and what doesn't. There we go. So we've now got short wave, long wave. Have we got anything there? Yep. Medium wave. There we go. So as I say, all we're trying to do here is literally just move the move the controls to the point where we can hear something. It may or may not tune in depending on the reception and where we are. It is though, there we go. In our view, very preventable, which is why. But we've now effectively now got we've now got our volume fixed and the radio stations are all the radio bands are all back and we haven't done anything except literally just turn the turn the dials and move them from their original corroded positions so once we get inside we'll clean it properly anyway but that just lets us know that there's nothing fundamentally wrong with the uh, with any of the radio circuitry so that's great news right then so the, the biggest issue now is the uh, is the cassette deck so let's do some proper work and open it up so first things first we use my comedy oversized screwdriver to uh, open the back. There you go. I actually find it with the longer screwdrivers you can get more torque. Plus, this is the closest I've got to uh, the Japanese international standard screwdrivers as well. So, uh, get a much better bite, generally speaking, on the screws than a regular Phillips or Posi drive. So that's a very small screw there. We'll make a note of these as they as they come out. Because we'll, we may well find that these are different screws. You can hear that reassuring click there. It doesn't feel like these have ever been out before, which is always a bonus. Nice when you think you're the first person inside. Hopefully it's a sign that no one's been messing about too much in here. Uh, obviously, it's exactly what we're about to do, but messing about's okay as long as you're servicing it and got a fair idea of what you're doing. So that's, that's the back away. And the antenna on this one, okay, it's got the, got the spade connector on the back of the actual, uh, on the well, on the back case there. All of the pots are buried quite deep inside there, to be honest. Um, right, so now we just, we might have to take the whole shebang out in one go, I think. Be careful with the ferrite rod and everything there. I'm just hoping that we can take 
take these screws off and see if we can have the actual board away. So two more of these long screws. If we remove all of the knobs, it's the best way to clean them anyway, to be honest. There we go. I just could not figure this out as to why it wasn't coming away. And there was a screw hidden behind some wires. So there's a tiny screw there that goes through this hole. And apart from that, the hole, see there's no damage to any of it. And this is why you should never force things. I knew there was something holding it up and it would just happen to be one little screw in the middle. Okay, so the microphones just pull out. Okay, so we have a few things to ponder now then. So we're in, as I said, we've got really good access now to clean the heads, the capstan, the pinch roller, um, check the, uh, the counter belt and stuff like that. Now, I did say the pots weren't too bad and we'd clean them whilst we we're in there. Now we can, we can get to them easily enough now, do a little bit of a spray cleaner in there. And we can also clean all of the other sort of switches and everything else that's going on. So that's all, that's all really good news. So um, that's fantastic. We can get in there. I think to get the um, to get the cassette deck mechanism out is the three screws there. The interesting one is the VU meter, which looks like it's proper captive. Now it's very strange actually. Um, it's in it's inside that sandwich there, and you can't pull it out that way because of this plastic, and you can't get it out of the front because this plate here is also um is also held in so that looks like it's bound in or welded on or something um so we may end up indeed having to take the uh the dial gauge off which means bending some of the pins on the back and seeing if we can take the stereo light out and retract it slightly and slide it out to remove this so that we can then get access to the vu meter itself but I'm wondering if maybe we need to sort of run some tests on the meter anyway. Um, the access to the two contacts is easy enough and we can get to both of the terminals from the board as well. Admittedly, one of them's hidden under the cassette deck, but because we're getting that away anyway, we might just have a quick look at that now just to see if we can get the cassette deck out. Okay, so the four screws in each corner of the deck, one multi-plug there. And hopefully, righty ho. So here we go then. So here are the belts. Let me just move, zoom this in for you. See what we can see. Okay, so the motor pulley is there. Quite crikey, this is a good little system. We've got two. So we've got two belts running off the the, uh, the motor pulley. So we need to just have a look at the uh, take up mechanism on this and see see what's sticking. It could just be a belt or it could be, could just need some lubrication. And um, we'll just check into how that works. But in any event, that's that's good that we can at least get to them to, to service that. So forgive me, I've jumped ahead a bit of myself today whilst I was just tinkering away and haven't been recording everything. But basically, I've taken the, um, got the cassette deck sort of out, as it were. I've also removed the flywheel just there. Um, it gives me a chance to clean, clean the runners for it. And also it means that having got the belts off now, I can find some replacement belts the right size, so that's something. But also what I wanted to do was really just clean inside the pulleys, clean any residue, lubricate the um, the, cap, uh, the motor spindle a little bit, 
clean the heads while I'm in here. But also I noticed that the um, the idler wheel tire was very, um, well, very, very worn, shall we say. Um, I've just actually turned it inside out just in case we can do something with it. Um, but the actual the actual idler wheel is, um, once the tire's on, it barely shows. I think it's worn down to the point of no return. And if I put some rubber renew on there, I don't really think it's gonna do a great deal. Um, so I'm more inclined to try and actually replace it. Now I don't have one exactly the same size, but I've got one that's, I've got an O-ring, which is almost identical, but marginally larger out of diameter. So my plan is that I'm gonna degrease all of this, clean up inside the actual uh, idler wheel, replace it with this one and then refit it. So that's where we're at now. So just gonna put a drop of oil on the motor. Doesn't need much at all. I'm just gonna put a couple of drops just down inside. There we go. I mean, make sure, of course, that it doesn't go anywhere near the uh, the contact surfaces for the actual belts, because we don't want the belts slipping. And so to that end as well, what we'll do now is just put a little bit of uh, alcohol on a little Q-tip there, and just go around the spindles. Just making sure that any uh, any residue of the belts is not on there. Doesn't seem too bad to be fair. And uh, we'll just get inside the pulley there as well. You can see a bit of stuff's coming off of there, but nothing, nothing too major. So that's that. We'll also just do the uh, the flywheel as well. Just anything where the belts will go, never does any harm. That's great. And also, of course, now is the perfect opportunity to uh, clean the capstan itself, which looks very clean to be fair, but it's always worth just doing that. We can also do the heads while we're at it. There we go. And we'll also just do the uh, pinch roller. We know the pinch roller works okay because it was pulling the tape through um, and actually it was snarling up, but obviously that's because it was being pulled through absolutely fine by the pinch roller, it just wasn't being taken up at the other end. So that's the new O-ring on the idler wheel. I've given it a clean. Hopefully that's not too big. Um, we'll find out because then of course it will start to pinch if we're not careful. So we'll get that back on now. And to get the idler wheel back on is easier said than done. But basically what we want to try and do is feed it under this spring And onto the little pin because of course the next thing we need to do is actually press it down from the other side the next job is this tiny little washers two of um, if you can just see those mega tiny just the end of the tweezers there look so one goes on then the spring then we mount this tiniest, tiniest little clear one. It's literally, literally this, oh shit. I was about to say the smallest component in the entire deck. And there she is, she's on. I actually did drop it on the floor, no word of a lie. Right, anyway, good. We'll now try and find some new belts and see if we can get the uh, cassette deck running.
Okay, so old belts. Oh, hello, and new belts. So um, we've managed to get the right size. So we'll uh, go ahead and get those on now. So we'll just get the uh, get the caps done back through on the flywheel, and make sure you always put that tiny little washer back on. So that's through there. So remember the first or well, the larger square section belt went on the bottom. And literally onto there like so. And then the second belt. Good. Okay, that all seems fine. So uh, I think we'll go ahead and put that back together. We've cleaned the heads, we've cleaned the capstan, the pinch roller. We've replaced the idler tire with one we hope will fit. We've replaced both of the belts on this side. The one to the counter still works. So, um, and it's not too bad. It's, it's, it's not perished and so we'll leave that alone. So just put some contact cleaner. into the switches. Okay, good. So, belts are on. Let's get this capstan, sorry, the flywheel back on. The loop. To earth it, which goes on to that contact point there in a minute. Okay, so now we can get the uh, line the deck up and actually put that on. Always a little bit of jiggery pokery with some of these. There we go, that feels good. Okay, there's one. Two, three, and one more here, which is the earth. Radio. Good, so tune in. Tune in is on the top there. And the FM stereo light is on. So that's good. So let's go to tape, which is forward. And we'll find a tape. I'm not expecting any particular sounds to come out of this. No, the auto play has just come on. Right, we'll keep looking at that. Okay, so having tried to um, to put an O-ring on to the uh, the idler tire here, uh, where are we? Just inside there. Um, it's not worked very well at all. It was too tight and it was just running a bit too rough. So I've put the old tire back on, but reversed it for now and put some rubber renew on there. It still needs to have the ridiculously small washers there's two stacked on top of each other there look so they go they basically will go back onto the idler tire in a moment however for now we'll just put the uh, put the tape back in there we go that's it so she's now playing and not auto stopping now um so the new belts are on there and uh She's now playing properly, uh, so that's okay. So, hang on, I'll just try and stop it. There we go. Right, so the next stage then is we're gonna have a look at these pots, I think, 
Um, they need a little bit of a clean. They're not too bad and we can get to them. We can get to them from underneath there. But if we take these off, we can actually, if we unscrew these with a 7 16th uh, spanner, I believe, um, we can get the control panel off here. I'm kind of hoping we can have a go at trying to look at this VU meter and trying to sort out why that's uh, jammed onto the uh, the upper position there. We may not be able to fix that, but everything else is done on this, so it'd be a shame not to at least have a look at it. Righty ho, so we'll just unscrew the uh, potentiometer securing nuts. So one, two, and three. Okay, this control panel should just come away now. Again, come on, there we go. All right, so there's the board. So now we can get to the switches to give them a clean. But I'm just hoping now we may be able to get to somehow. I want to try and remove the VU meter if I can. But I've got a horrible feeling that the whole radiator, uh, radiator, radio um, chart there needs to come out to get access to it, which is a little bit frustrating, to be honest. But first, we'll just clean the pots. So I can't find any way of getting the VU meter out. It seems to be completely constrained here by the radio gauge. So what I'm gonna try and do is just bend these pins back, three pins all together, just gently, really gently just peen those back. So three bent pins on the back. I've just bent that one forward and there's a small one there forward. This one here is now unclipped from the front, which now leaves hopefully just this one, just here. If I can get it out of there, in theory, we should be in business. Okay, at last. Here's the VU meter. There we go. Good, now we might be able now to withdraw that entirely. Okay, and there she is. So we just need to see if we can uh, do something about that stuck needle. Okay, now trying to give this a little bit of a shake. It seems completely and utterly stuck. Probably been like that an awful long time. So um, not quite sure what we're gonna do about it. I don't want to force it yet. I don't want to touch anything. But by all accounts, I'm going to try something a bit unusual. Which is just to drop literally a couple of drops of acetone. A nail varnish remover. Onto there. Hopefully that will start to soften up soften up the glue in the mechanism and of course it flashes off it does flash off ultimately so it'll uh, it won't leave any residue there but it might just soften the glue enough and we might be able to see if we can start to to bring the needle back a little it might take a while so let's just leave that to soak and see how we get on well, something's happening because if I just give that whole thing just a very, very gentle breath, um, it's starting to move back and forth. So you never know. And the needle is floating over the top, so it's definitely not catching on the, uh, it's definitely not catching there. So regrettably, I've not been able to do anything with the VU meter. Um, I've spent about an hour or so messing about with acetone and heat from a soldering iron, trying to move the uh, move the needle. I'd managed to get it to bounce around a tiny bit, um, cleaned all the contacts inside that feed it, but the voltages seem okay. I mean, you can see it kind of moving around now a little bit. 
um, but basically it's just not returning. I can't get it to the point where um, where the needle wants to return and still be able to bounce back up again. I can get it to sort of come up most of the way um, and not return, or I can get it to stay at the bottom and not really move. So um, unfortunately, we're gonna have to abandon that. The actual unit itself really has had it. So, um, but the good news is at least now the cassette tape um, is playing really beautifully. The radio is working well, the switches have all been cleaned. So um, it's a bit of a shame because it would have been nice to have had this working as well, but some things are just out of your control sometimes. So I'm taking this opportunity to rudely interrupt myself. It's a couple of weeks after I was filming the original Morant CRS2104 video. I've had a couple more in for spares and repair. And um, this particular one here um, does work. If I look at the, uh, the tuning dial, you can see the strength indicator and you can see, you can see the VU sweep is absolutely fine. Um, so what I'm going to do is pinch the VU meter out of this one for now, um, because this particular one also needs um, also needs a dial cord as well because it is it is slipping. So we need to redo the dial cord and get a bit more grip on the post there as well. So there's a few jobs to do on this other other model which you haven't seen before. But I thought I'd just, as I say, interrupt my own video to show you that I'm going to pinch this one and um and put the vu meter into the original model so here we go then so we've just unpicked part of the dial gauge there and freed up the vu meter and uncoupled the uh, two connections from the board so all being well we should be able now to just withdraw the unit there it is good so there's the functioning one let's get this into the other unit then so we're back to the project at hand now and i've just unplugged the uh the slightly shonky VU meter out of there and uncouple the connectors. So with a bit of luck, we'll just get this free like so. So there's the old one and there's the replacement. So I'll put that to one side before I get them mixed up. And um, we'll just go ahead and get this one in, put it back together and hopefully it'll work nicely. Well, there we go, the new meter's in, everything's been put back together again and the old meter is down here we may at some point actually see if we can have another go at trying to get that one right as i say it's it's just a bit temperamental however let's try this one i've not actually tried it yet so volume on and let's tune the station yay perfect honestly this radio is so I've noticed this even from the other ones that I've had in for repair. The radio on this um, 2104 is just sensational. Really clear, really warm, really deep, um, just a full sound. These are gorgeous radios. And I've got to be honest, um, this one's taken me a few weeks to, to make this video because there were a few jobs to do on it, a good clean service, belts and stuff like that. And I was really quite annoyed that I couldn't get the VU meter to work and Fair enough, we couldn't get it to work physically by fixing it, but I've been looking out for some others that needed repair or for spares. And whilst we've got time at some point to come back and just see if we can get this other one working, I'm just delight delighted that um, that the, the only problem that remained with this, this unit has now actually been resolved. So um, I'll just put it out of tuning again so you can see the signal drop. There we go so fantastic i'm really pleased so she's all finished so let's take a proper look i think what we'll do now is take the speakers out of the front case as well because they are they are sat in there um and it could do with a bit of a clean to be honest um i'm going to give it a good old scrub get in all these little grooves and everything so um i think to that end what i'll do first is uh, get the speakers out and give this a proper scrub and then it literally is just going to be a reassembly job so i've just polished up the uh, the dial there the gauge looks really nice now you'd be amazed how much gunk actually came off of that i'll also clean up the uh, switches just there before i put everything back together and somewhere aha here we go is the uh, the speaker is just mounted in the chassis there so i'm going to get those out real quick and then um, give it a good scrub so speakers are out and we've got the cassette door ready for a good clean there and there's just the front grille 
and uh, yeah, just needs a good clean. So uh, there's no point taking the uh, no point taking the handle off. It's literally just a little bolt each side, but we don't need to get that off to what to uh, clean what we need to clean today. There we go. So she's had a good scrub now. All the parts are nice and clean and polished up, ready to go back together again. So speakers are back in now. I've also um, just rebonded the counter window in as well because that had fallen out where the glue was so old. So we've refreshed that. Also put a little bit of hot glue on the speaker screws as well. Um, there was some um, resin on there originally, of course, to stop them from vibrating loose. So um, now we've reinstalled the speakers. We've just put some hot glue on there just to do the same. So here it is, the Super Scope by Marantz CRS2104. Looking absolutely fantastic and performing brilliantly as well. Now, apologies if you can hear the rain beating on the windows outside. It's England, it's winter, it's been pouring down for days and there's nothing much I can do about that, I'm afraid. But I did want to share this video with you as soon as it was ready. So uh, hopefully you can put up with that. So the actual unit then, it had a few issues. It was a bit dirty, the switches were noisy, it was just a bit grubby all over generally, um, issues with the playback, fast forward and record and stuff like that. So it's got some new belts, we've sorted the idler tires. Now the main issue though that I wanted to fix was the VU meter as well. That was the reason this video was put back a little bit of a while because I didn't really want to bring you one that wasn't finished and it was a bit annoying to be honest. I'm a bit like that. If something's not quite right, it does wind me up a bit. So um, the fact that I couldn't get the VU meter fixed, it has still been bugging me and I haven't thrown it away. I'm still trying to fix it. But um, this one is a replacement unit from another model because I do have two or three other CRS2104s in as well. And my plan is to um, refurbish them all. But this one, I wanted to just really show you how you get them apart, what it looks like inside and how to sort of maintain and service the different parts of it. So she looks absolutely fantastic. So let's just turn the uh, turn the radio on so we can we can have a little listen to her a minute. And we'll put the radio there. There we go. And you can see the VU meter now. And it's so clear. So clear. No crackle from the switches. And you'll see the VU meter now, just if I tune through the bands, you'll see the signal strength coming and going. And the FM stereo is there. Fantastic. So that's that. So let's just check the tape out as well. So we'll switch over to tape and I've got something in now. There we go. I can't play you too much for copyright reasons. But if you listen to this sustained guitar note, You'll hear that um, there's a nice vibrato on there, but the, um, there's no real sort of wow or flutter. We've got all the new belts on there and it's performing beautifully. So um, there we go then. So the tape's sorted, the radio's sorted. Any cosmetic issues are all polished up on there. And yeah, it's just beautiful. So there you go. Then there's the CRS2104 by Superscope or Marantz. Hope you've enjoyed watching the video. Do please subscribe, hit the notification bell for updates. We've got loads of personal stereos, radio cassettes, eight track stuff, all kinds of things in progress at the moment. So I hope you've enjoyed it or found it useful. Do comment below if you've got one, if you've um, had any similar issues or there's any information that, that I can perhaps provide um, with regard to repairing these. But anyway, all the best for now. Thanks very much for watching and I'll be back soon. Take care, bye-bye.